Welcome to John Gates Games. Today, I'll be reviewing Smile, which was designed by Michael Schott. And in this game, all of your friendly, cuddly creatures have escaped into the forest. It's now nighttime, and you need to use fireflies to lure them back out. But you don't want to accidentally lure out those feral wild creatures, which you certainly don't want in your house. First, I'll explain how this game plays, and then I'll jump into my review. In order to set up the game, each player is going to take one set of six fireflies, and then if you are in a four-player game, you'll have to make sure that these four-player cards are in this deck, and likewise with a five-player game. We of course need to shuffle up this deck of cards, and now we can set up the game by dealing out a number of cards equal to the number of players sitting around the table. So in this instance, we have four, and now we are going to want to sort these cards by their value. So we put a minus two there, uh, the one, and then the two twos just like that, and now play can start with the starting player. At the moment, they start the game with six of these fireflies in their hand, and it's important to try and keep this number hidden from your opponents. And now, when it's your turn, you have two different possibilities to take your action. The first is you can just grab a critter from the middle of the table, but it must already have at least one firefly on it. So at the start of the game, they do not have that option. Instead, they simply have to take a firefly from their hand and put it down onto the critter with the lowest value. So they'd be forced to put it just like that. And with that, their turn would be done. And it would now go to the second player who might take one of these and put this down like this. The third player might also say, you know what? I don't want negative points because uh, in this game, at the end, whoever has the most points wins. But now the fourth player might say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this instead of putting a firefly down because that means that these fireflies are going to join the rest of them in their hand and now this card is going to go face up in front of them. So at this point you slide these down and this fourth player is out of the round and the first three players can continue going. So uh, the first player would maybe go like this. The second player would say, you know what, one point's not bad. They take this one and now we'd be in a situation where there are two of these critters left and they both have the same number. So uh, right here, the third player can actually put this firefly down on this one or that one. It's kind of up to them. And let's say they went over there and uh, the starting player for some reason decided they just wanted to grab this card. So this would get added into their hand and now there's just one card left which means that this third player must just take this critter and now we have finished the first complete round of the game so we can deal out four more cards from the top of the deck and just like before we will organize these by their value in the bottom so minus two and then two three four and whoever ended the last round is going to start things off so that would be the uh, third player right here and now I'd like to start talking about the colors in the top left portions of these cards. Now, if you'll notice, this uh, first card that was taken by the fourth player has this blue splotch up here. Now, that means that if that player is ever to take another card with a blue splotch in the top left, then they would have both of these cards cancel out. So the fourth player right here is very incentivized to try and take this card because this blue matches this blue, which means if they took it, it would cancel these and they would no longer have negative two points. They, of course, wouldn't have access to this positive two points either. So uh, this can go both ways, of course. Uh, this card right here is a positive two and uh, this player is going to be probably trying to avoid taking yellow splotches because they don't want to lose the points that they have grabbed. If it's ever a player's turn and they cannot grab a critter because there's no fireflies and they have no fireflies in their hand, then they're going to take one of these blue teardrop tokens, put it face up in front of themselves. It'll be worth minus one point at the end of the game. And then they would get a new firefly from out of the game and they get to start playing. And uh, with that, that's pretty much all the rules. So players will go through 10 rounds just like this. And at the very end of the game, everyone will add up all of the points on the critters that they have have in front of themselves. They will also take all of the fireflies they currently have and divide that number by five round down. Down, and whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. Let's now begin the review for Smile by starting with a few positive points. And for the first of these, I'd like to discuss the Firefly mechanic. Now, if you are familiar with uh, another game called No Thanks, then this might seem very familiar to you because in both of these games, you have situations where when it's your turn, if you don't like the card in the middle of the table, then you have to lose a resource in order to pass it to another player. And then you hope that one of them is going to take the card and that hopefully you'll grab something else in the future. But this game brings a really nice tweak to this overall idea in that you draw one card per player within the given round. So you don't have a situation where you just have that one card and you hope the next card is going to be good and you're kind of stuck on the luck of the draw there because in Smile, you know that you're going to take one card every single round and you look out there and maybe they're all terrible for you. So you need to try and work it so that you get to the least bad option for yourself. Or maybe you get really greedy in a given round and really shoot for one of those very high level uh, cards. And I think it's a great tweak on this overall overall idea of an inverse auction where you are losing resources to not take things in uh, this way because you can 
plan ahead, and also you can look around the table and see the kind of things that your opponents are trying to get, and it's very easy to tell what uh, kind of things they are looking for and what kind of things they're not. And then it really starts to rely on, well, how much of those resources do you think they have? Because the game is kind of assuming that you're not going to be able to count how many uh, of the fireflies you have given out and pick back up again, and that's definitely part of the mystery and the allure of the decisions you're making uh, with this firefly mechanic, and I think overall it works very well in this game. For positive number two, I'd like to discuss the color matching cancellation mechanic that comes in the game. Now, if you remember, this is where when you take a card from the middle, if the color in the top left matches the color on a card you've already taken, then both of those cards are going to be discarded from the game. And this seems like such a simple idea, but what it brings to the table in terms of extra things to think about is quite satisfying because it means that when you look to all those cards in the middle of the table, you're not just saying, okay, well, negative numbers are bad and positive numbers are good. There will be situations where you'll look out and be like, that negative two right there is the best card out of all the ones out there because it's going to cancel out that minus three that I have in my area. So by taking a negative two, I actually gain three points, and that makes it quite good. And then you have the extra layer of trying to figure out what your opponents are interested in, and they're, of course, doing the same thing back at you. They could probably see that you are quite vested in grabbing that uh, particular card, and so maybe they will feel like not wanting to over-incentivize that card by putting a bunch of fireflies down, but then again, they don't necessarily want to take that card because maybe that one is going to mess up the combo that they have already. So, I, like I said, I just really enjoy the decisions that come out of this seemingly incredibly simple mechanic in the game. Up next, we have positive number three, and for this one, I just have to say that this game is incredibly quick and easy to teach, learn, and to play. Uh, this is one of those situations where you can just uh, pull out the cards that don't match the player count, shuffle up the deck, and then just start playing and teach as you go. And in general, I found that I've got all of the basics taught in like 30 or 40 seconds, and then you just kind of move on with a couple tiny edge cases, but you just get into the game so quickly. And then when it comes to um, the actual playtime, the box says that it plays in about 30 minutes. But from my experience, it's usually been quite a bit uh, less than that. Like the five player game I played was maybe over 20 minutes, maybe closing on 25. But like a three player game can easily be played in 15 or so minutes. So in general, I think all of these things are big pluses for this game right here. For my fourth and final positive point, I just have to briefly state that the artwork and the production design in this game is really great. Uh, first of all, on those cards, they are gigantic, and they have just the most wonderful art on them. They're just such adorable, cute little creatures on all of them, and it seems like every time I've uh, dealt out these cards for the first time in the middle of the table, at least one person has just been completely enchanted by them. And, oh, look at this one! And, oh, look at that one over there! And uh, even people who have played this multiple times uh, still seem to derive quite a bit of joy from the wonderful artwork that's in the game. And when it comes to the overall uh, graphic design, it seems like the numbers are easy to read. The colors in the top left corner maybe could be a little bit more apparent, but we haven't had problems with that. And the overall packaging for the game, it's just the right size. Like, the game perfectly fits in there, and it all works out really well. So yeah, I think from this production uh, artistic standpoint, they did very well with this game. It's now time to discuss a couple of neutral points for the game, and the first of these has to do with the overall swingy nature of the scores as you are playing it. Uh, I have seen situations where the game has been lost on the very last turn of the game. Maybe somebody has a dominant score, but due to the way the colors cancel out, they suddenly lose five points. And a winning score is usually in the low to mid-teens, so losing five points really can mean you were in first place and now you're in last place. And that just all happens suddenly at the very end of the game. And I think a big part of that uh, has to do with that uh, color cancellation thing. It means that if you have a lot of points, then you have a lot of points to potentially lose. And on the opposite side, it means if you have a lot of negative points, then it's going to be somewhat easy for you to catapult uh, back up into the fray because you might be in a position to easily take some more negative cards that'll cancel out the negatives that you already have and really get you back in there. I've seen situations where somebody has been in the negative on turn five and they have actually turned things around and won the game at the very end. So uh, this is just something you need to understand when you go to sit down to play this game that the scores are going to swing wildly all over the place and it's only the person at the very very end who has the highest score who's going to win it and that might change drastically even with that very last action. When it comes to my other neutral point I just want to briefly discuss the role of card draw luck in this game because obviously 
this is a card game. It's essentially a deck of cards and those beads. And whenever you uh, shuffle up a deck of cards, then luck is going to swing all over the place. And I already talked about swingy scores in the first neutral point, but specifically, I think this game does a pretty reasonable job of mitigating luck because you have that tableau of cards that you put out into the middle. And that means that you can look out there and realize which cards are good for you, which cards are bad for you, and try to come up with a game plan based off the resources you have in your hand to work your way into a positive situation. But I'm not going to lie, if I say that you're, there's never going to be situations where all the cards are terrible, terrible, and it's just going to knock out the situation that you have. Or based off of the turn order, things uh, happen in such a way that you must take this one card that just completely takes you out of uh, contention, which is something you have to understand. But again, this game plays in like 15 to 25 minutes. So uh, knowing that card draw luck is somewhat mitigated by the amount of visibility you have, but still present is something you just need to be comfortable with, uh, like you would with realistically any card game. At this point, I would normally go into some negative points, uh, which are things that I felt uh, adversely affected the overall uh, experience of the game and things that maybe they should have changed. But honestly, I haven't been able to come up with one, so let's go ahead and move on. Next up, it's time to talk about the variability for Smile, and I think considering this is a light, quick card game, it's pretty much what I expected. Like, you're not going to see any huge emergent gameplay uh, come out of this game in your fourth play, and you are going to see, well, all of the cards every time you sit down to play it, but I would not expect an extreme amount of variability out of this sort of game, uh, so there's nothing in particular that makes it shine, but there's also nothing to complain about. When it comes to player count, Smile supports three, four, and five players. And I've played all of those player counts and it works really well at all of them. I do think that four player is probably the best, uh, largely because it kind of sits right in the middle of three and five, because three worked fine. It was good and fun and I would play three player again, but I do feel like the game benefits from a larger uh, tableau of card options in the middle of the table. And when it comes to the five player experience, it worked very well for there as well. It's not like there's much downtime in this game, but it did also seem like it's a little bit harder to track what everybody else is trying to do. And you know, there's just a lot of resources out there in the system. Somebody might just be overflowing with their hand at, cer at a certain point. So I feel like four works the best, but I would have no problem playing it at any of these player counts in the future. In conclusion, I've played Smile four times at this point, and every single time I've sat down to play the game, I have ended up really enjoying myself. And when I've looked around the table, it seems like everybody has been enjoying themselves as well. I just think it's a really great package of some smart uh, mechanics when it comes to the inverse auction and the way you have one card per player. So you have some decent decisions to make as you are contemplating, do I take this card right now or do I put another resource down? But then you mix into that the wonderful art that are on, that's on these very large cards that are in this uh, perfectly sized box that sits on your shelf. I just think that it is a really solid filler style game that takes, you know, 15 to 25 minutes. The player counts go from three to five and it's fine at all of those. And that also means this is like the uh, one of those perfect uh, beginning of game night sort of games. When people are still trickling in, you just bring Smile out, you play a game and maybe two more people have shown up and then you'll break out into the longer games after that. So I think when you just add all these things up, I strongly recommend you give this one a shot if you're interested in a smart, quick, and easy to to learn filler style game, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel through Patreon, including all of these producer level pledges. If you too would like to directly support the channel, you could do so at patreon.com slash games, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to see more in-depth board game reviews like this one, as well as full game playthroughs and vlogs, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.